Humans are really bad at littering, even in outer space. Since we put the first satellite into space in 1957, we've launched over 17,000 satellites. 3,000 of these are now dead, but still orbiting Earth. And when we include smaller pieces of debris, like astronaut gloves, old satellite components, and even tiny flecks of paint, we estimate that there are hundreds of millions of pieces of space junk floating around up there, just waiting to cause problems. Over the next decade, we expect an exponential increase in operational satellites, largely thanks to mega constellations like SpaceX's Starlink. This is great for things like universal access to wireless high-speed internet, but it's not so great for the orbital environment. Because more satellites means more congestion and more risk of collisions. If we don't clean up outer space, we could eventually create an uncontrollable chain reaction called the Kessler syndrome, where debris collisions create more debris over and over until space is no longer accessible. So what do we do? Well, there are two parts to the solution. We need to clean up current space debris and stop creating more. In another video, we talked about cleaning it up, but in this video, we're gonna talk about how we can prevent the creation of more debris. And the solution actually starts in the design phase, way before a satellite gets to space. Every satellite in orbit today was designed to be single use. Let me show you what that means using a car as an example. Imagine if our cars were not designed to be serviced or refilled with gas. In this scenario, if you run out of gas or break down, you just abandon your car and buy a new one each time. That is wildly problematic, and not just for your wallet or the environment. Because what if your car runs out of gas on a majorly trafficked highway? While you're busy buying your new car, your abandoned vehicle in the middle of the road is causing traffic congestion and accidents with a cascading effect down the entire highway. This is the reality of satellites today. Because they've always been designed to be single-use vehicles, they've never been designed to be serviceable. So when a satellite runs out of fuel or can't generate power anymore, there's currently nothing we can do about it. Now, one of the most obvious ways we can solve this problem is by including basic standardized interfaces that enable another spacecraft to refuel it or tow it. Just like your car has a tow hitch and a standardized interface for refilling gas or even charging it. There are several interface solutions in the works right now, including Astroscale's docking plate and OrbitFab's Rafti refueling port. Their goal is to get these on every new satellite that launches, but that is posing some challenges. For example, satellite engineering is heavily constrained by mass. More overall mass either means a higher launch cost or less mass dedicated to the sensors and science equipment. So satellite manufacturers and operators either need to be required or incentivized to add these interfaces. And designing for serviceability is only a small part of the solution. During the design phase, satellite operators are also required to plan how exactly they will dispose of their satellite after the mission ends. They used to have 25 years to remove a spacecraft from low Earth orbit, which really meant they could just leave a satellite up there and let the atmosphere drag naturally bring it down. But that requirement has recently dropped dramatically to just five years. Satellite operators can plan for this by either ensuring there's adequate fuel left over for a deorbit burn or utilizing a space tow truck service that is expected to come online in the coming decade. Now, the same goes for higher orbits where you can't deorbit into the atmosphere. Satellites must be moved to graveyard orbits similar to scrapyards here on Earth, so they don't just sit there littering precious geosynchronous orbits. Now that we've designed for serviceability and have a disposal plan, it's time to launch. But launch activities are a significant contributor to space debris too, primarily through the disposal of rocket stages and other launch components like protective shields and payload separation rings that don't re-enter the atmosphere and burn up. Launch companies are working on this problem in a few ways, including engineering reusable rockets, minimizing the number of ejectable parts from non-reusable stages, and deorbiting within that five-year rule as well. Okay, once we get to space, we need to act responsibly by coordinating and cooperating with other satellites to proactively avoid collisions. For every satellite in low Earth orbit, hundreds of alerts are issued each week, warning of a potential close encounter with another satellite or a piece of space junk. Thankfully for now, only about two alerts per day per satellite are high enough risk to warrant additional analysis, and only one per year result in an actual collision avoidance maneuver. But this number is only growing, and each analysis requires a ton of resources. Additionally, every time a satellite swerves to avoid a collision, something is lost. Either hours spent analyzing the collision risk, 
fuel spent moving out of the way, data and science, and even revenue, because time spent moving is time not spent doing its job. Many people, including the European Space Agency, are working on automated collision avoidance systems that will assess the risk and likelihood of a collision, improve the decision making on whether or not a maneuver is actually needed, and they may even send the move orders to at-risk satellites. AI could also be a game changer here by improving prediction accuracies and reducing the burden on human satellite operators. However, none of that defines which party is responsible for moving their spacecraft. Collision avoidance maneuvers expend a lot of precious fuel, so a company or national space agency could say, I'm not gonna move my spacecraft and use my fuel, you have to move yours. And what's worse is there's nothing stopping them from doing that. There are currently no rules of the road in space, but space is a commons susceptible to the tragedy of the commons which is a situation in which individuals with access to a public resource, the commons, act in their own interest and in doing so, ultimately deplete the resource. We're already starting to see this, but to solve this problem, we need someone, most likely the government, to step in and provide incentives for someone to move their satellite. I actually co-wrote a paper on this a few years ago, and we identified a few different incentive structures that could be employed in the future, including giving a refueling credit to the party who moves so they can recoup that lost fuel at little or no cost to them. Now, after a satellite finishes its primary mission, it's time to decide what to do with it. We've already talked about ensuring the satellite is serviceable and disposed of within five years, but there are several other things to consider. For example, scientists and engineers are studying in greater detail how satellite components burn up in the atmosphere. By designing parts that will fully burn up, we can prevent scenarios like this. We also need to understand in greater detail how deorbiting affects the atmosphere and determine if there are better, less environmentally harmful ways to do so. There are also alternatives to deorbiting, including reusing and recycling. Satellites could be retasked to perform other missions if their hardware still works. And by using refueling or tow truck services, they could even be moved to entirely new orbits for entirely different missions. And the startup Cislunar Industries is interested in recycling spacecraft like scrap metal to make larger in-space structures or even metal propellants without the need to launch new spacecraft or metal from Earth while also reducing the number of defunct satellites in orbit. All of these efforts are crucial for taking care of the space environment in much the same way we're cleaning up Earth, ensuring that we can continue to use space as a resource to help us solve humanity's greatest challenges both on and off Earth. Thank you so much for watching my video and be sure to watch the one on how we use lasers and claws to clean up space debris.